Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How you doing? It's big Porky here. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. Today, I'm sporting a Under Armour rugby top. I know it's. Uh, I'm not the voice of hardcore rugby, uh, and I don't like rugby, so I just want to point that out. But it was a present. But anyway, today we're joined by Rob from Cheltenham. How are you doing, Rob? Yeah, good mate. How are you? Right, big boxing fan, Rob. Yeah, I'd say it's my favourite sport, boxing. Well, not as much as it used to be. It's all yeah. a bit down the drain now, isn't it? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah you've been watching my videos then a second. Uh, okay, <laughs> then. Uh, you've got a few topics that you want to uh, to come out with today, haven't you, Rob? So, fire away. Yeah, first one. Let's talk about the myth that is Dillian White and his resume. Oh, Dillian White. Oh, go on Dillian then. White. I'll, I'll, to be honest, right, I wouldn't have a problem with him apart from he just talks so much shite yeah. all the time that everyone's scared of him, that he feels like he's owed a world title fight, that as if Wada's ducking him, which is, is completely... Un- I, I want him to fight Wada because I want to see him on the floor. I yeah. really want that fight to happen, but I can't see it happening. But anyway, his resume... So what people need to remember is Dave Allen points victory and Allen was, what, bought in on a week's notice? Yeah. Some of that. Lucas Brown was completely fat and out of shape. Can I just push, stop you there? That was Dave Allen's biggest purse at the time, 20 grand. What, the, uh, the white... Uh, got £8,000 yeah. more than he did for Lewis Ortiz. Oh. <laughs> he got more point. Well, I suppose it makes sense, doesn't it? But... Yeah. Um, no. And then, so these aren't in a, any particular order. I just jotted some down. Um, Hellenius, you, you could probably argue, well, he got rocked in that fight and looked terrible, didn't he, against Hellenius? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And Dave Allen dropped Hellenius in sparring in, in another country. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. Set about him. But in fairness, looking at the list here, Hellenius is probably one of his better wins, considering what he did to, uh, was it Kaunaki? He banged out yeah. recently. Um, Joshua got battered apart from landing one shot he didn't do anything else yeah but Barry Earn said it were life and death and he'd do it again he got battered didn't he he landed yeah, one I, shot I didn't even give him the round that he, he caught Joshua that punch in. I didn't even give him that round he never won a round in that fight so all this about yeah. it were life and death and all that that's only from the, the looking through rose tinted glasses aren't they well, that's it, yeah. His, his legs were shaky, weren't they, Adam? For about 10 yeah, seconds. Adam, legs are shaky, Adam. Yeah. His legs are shaky. Yeah. So, um, then you move on to Chisora Chisor 1, which I think he lost. Close, yeah. but I, I thought he lost that fight. And Chisora has been no more than a European-level gatekeeper for, what, six, seven years now? Chisora's not even British level at the moment, is he? He's not even British level, I don't think. Would you would you take Chisora to beat Daniel DeBar or Joe Joyce? He definitely wouldn't beat Joyce. Um, obviously, DeBar pre-injury, you everyone would put money on DeBar, but I think, mm. yeah, well, I don't know, D- don't know about that one. I probably would favour DeBar. Well, this Chisora... is how I look at it, Rob. Let me just stop you there. This is how I look at it. What you just said there is really really good, but you got to look at it like this. Dylan White's. Got a British title at home, right? Which he won off Ian Lewinson with vacant. And he's yeah. beat Chisora twice. So what level is Chisora? Is he English level? Well, you could make that argument, couldn't you, if you look yeah. at it like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I thought he lost that first Chisora fight. I think most people did. Chisora 2, he was losing that fight comfortably, even actually on the official scorecards, I think, till, um, till he got knocked out in, what, round 10, 11, something like that? <clears throat> but anyway, he was getting beaten. And fair play, a knockout is a knockout, you can't argue it, but by that token, Didion White can't say that Povetkin got him with a lucky shot. You've got to use it the same argument both ways round, haven't you? Um, Parker, the headbutt won in that fight. If that was scored, if that was actually called a headbutt rather than a, an official knockdown, I think he'd have lost that fight as well yeah. on the cards. Didn't offer to give him a rematch yet. He demands a rematch with Pavetkin. And can we just back up a little bit to Chisora knockout in the second fight? Uh, yeah. We have to say that Dylan White's left hook's world class, don't we? We agree on that, don't we? 
Hell of a shot, yeah. My my yeah. point on that though is he was losing the fight, but irrelevant. He won the fight. You can't take yeah, that away. But well, did, did, did anybody say that were a lucky punch because he was losing the fight? One, he just like Povetkin were losing the fight. Yeah, that's how, my how is it a lucky punch if you're in there to do your job and that's throw punches? When a, a tire fitter fits a tire on the card, they say them wheels look good. Oh, that were lucky that you fitted that on there. No, because yeah, they're doing exactly. the job out. It's the job to put the nuts on the wheels. A boxer's job is to hit you with them. So it's not lucky, is it? How is it lucky? Yeah, no, I never that's, got that. Me. That's my exact point with the Povetkin one. Is that everyone rushes out or the Sky Mob and says, "Oh, you know, lucky punch." White was winning the fight. No one said that when Chisora, when he knocked out Chisora. Well, Chisora was winning that fight, but no one brings up that narrative, do they? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was the, the obviously that. Then you've got Rivas, where he failed a drug test. Um, so there's a question mark over that. And then obviously it winds up with Povetkin, and he gets sparked out by a 40 year old bloke. But bearing in mind, he was laughing at Wada for fighting an even older version of Ortiz. Povetkin's probably when he was 41, wasn't he? Yeah, the guy's just a walking contradiction, isn't he? Like, belly. He really, well, I don't know who annoys me more, belly or white. It's both of them, both of them annoy me because yeah. Bellew has never beat a champion and White's never fought for a European title. Yeah. Behind a world title. In fact, he knocked a world title back with Big Doss of Femi, didn't he? Who, White? White knocked it back at Wembley for yeah, four yeah. in 2000. So yeah, he got offered millions for it, didn't he? Why is he complaining? Look, we, what we've got now, we've got a, a sense of entitlement culture where you've got yeah. fighters inserting themselves through social media into situations where they want to get on platforms to put themselves like Dave Allen's done it. Dave Allen's come out and said, oh, if I'd, I'd do it, I've been offered an exhibition for 40 grand. I knocked it back, but I'd do one. He hadn't been offered <laughs> an exhibition, but he's more or less saying I'd do exhibitions. It's the only way I'd come back because they all want to come back. Every pug thinks he can come back and pinch a few quid. That's what it's all about. Now, Dave Allen's retired, hasn't he now? So, and everybody knows that he's, he's been bashed about for 27 years old, hasn't he? Right. Like, last fight at 27. So he's retired now, but he'd come back for an exhibition for right money. Who would pay to see an exhibition with Dave Allen, a man that's not won a belt? Nobody. The only fight he could get, if he had a management team around him, he could create something on social media and get something against like a Logan Paul or a Jake Paul and all that. But what would that say about boxing? And would he be kicking sand in boxing's face? Yes, but would he be entitled to that? Because he's been bashed about, hasn't he? And he maybe feels that maybe he's due some money down the line. And maybe he is. But it's wrong for a sport if that happens. You don't get Jake Paul and Logan Paul telling Jurgen Klopp they want to play centre-half for Liverpool, do they? Because they could do it a centre-half. No, but they'll, they'll tell Eddie Earn that they'll fight on Sky or Dazone. And why do these people keep falling for it? I'll tell you why. Because it's money. It's about money. And it's wrong, isn't it? Um, but anyway, yeah, go on, you were saying. I don't know what. Dave Allen is probably everything that's wrong with boxing in terms of the opportunities <laughs> he's had. For the, for the level that he's at, though. But it will come back to bite him on the arse. Like, he'll think that Eddie Hearn's done all these things for him, getting him on Sky and all that. It will bite him in the arse and he's bloody half brain dead in 20 years' time. He's already speaking with a slur now. I don't care what he says. He is speaking with a slur. Yeah, but he's David taken... is probably not even bothered as long as he can go to shop and buy 10 lion bars and sit in front of the telly. Well, yeah. Sky's... Anyway, it's, nothing, it's, nothing, it's nothing personal against him. He seems like an all right chap, but... Chap? <laughs> is that what they call it down your way? Yeah. <laughs> seems, like, seems an all right bloke, doesn't he? Bloke. But, um... <laughs> He's, he's like you said, you can look at it both ways. You can look at it from the fact I'm annoyed because he shouldn't be getting the opportunities he's got. And people say, well, he's got banter he brings in the crowd. Who gives a shit? You want to watch decent boxing. Um, but the disadvantage for him is, all right, mate, you've been on Sky Shows, but you've taken a hell of a beating. Price yeah. battered him. Yoka battered him. Um, who's the Ortiz. other one? Ortiz, yeah. Split his tongue in half, didn't he? Um, he got a bad cut against Lemroy Thomas in that in that draw. 
Yeah, well, everything was set up from that night, wasn't it? And then, and then that happened. So that was yeah, a bit maybe it just didn't meant to be that Dave Allen wins any belt whatsoever. I don't know. Maybe he's just had bad luck and bad hands dealt. But maybe it's the man upstairs watching down on Dave Allen and saying, and David's come out recently, hasn't he, and said, well, I never really trained. I never ran. I never trained. I just winged it. Now, this is a man who's applied for his British Boxing Board of Control licence to manage and advise fighters. I know, it's worrying, isn't it? That, well, I didn't uh, train and I took that fight. I shouldn't have took that fight. And so maybe he can learn from his mistakes and pass it on to the, his stable. stable. But he's already, he's already lost that Danny Murad, hasn't he? He's gone yeah, he's to... Um, to goals, he? Well, my, pff, yeah. good, luck to, good luck to young Danny. He, he puts the effort in. Maybe Dave ain't got the discipline to train him. I don't know, but managing's a bit different to training. Managing, you can lay in bed all day and stay on your phone and stay on Twitter and Instagram. So that'll be up Dave's street, won't it? Getting up when he wants and on his yeah. phone all day. So he'll enjoy that. He won't enjoy, enjoy somebody saying, right, get up with your fighter, take him for his run or take him on pads or do a strength and conditioning. He maybe won't enjoy that. But he might enjoy managing, I don't know. But he's, he must have a wealth of knowledge. In fact, I know he's got a wealth of knowledge. And it has to be tapped into. But don't take the piss out of boxing along the way because I've been in crowd when David comes out to fight and everybody who's had a drink, they're all there. They're going, oh, it's Dave Allen. It's all like a bit of a... The, the, it's like when you watch Coronation Street, you can see the serious stuff in it. And then the cameras turn to Roy Cropper and Ailey in the calf. Or the turn to Jack Duckworth and Vera Duckworth. That's the light-hearted entertainment now. When da- it is entertainment boxing, though. When Dave comes out to the ring, it's all, go on, Dave! It's all like a bit of a joke and a bit bit, bit fun and, and they let him play to the crowd. But I think they overkilled it, didn't they? And, and he was playing to the crowd. I saw him recently on Sky and we were rolling all over the floor in here. And he came out on this interview on Sky and he had a pair of boxer shorts on and a shirt. And I thought, why ain't he got no jeans on? It's just like him to do that because he'll want to steal the show. Like in the bubble, he yeah, was in a dressing, dressing gown, gown and really. Bart Simpson slippers, wasn't he, in the bubble? Why yeah. has he done that? Why? Why did, why did he do that? Why would you do that? Yeah. And have other people saying, have you seen that? It's overkill, isn't it? He's yeah. just trying too much. And you can try too much and then you get discarded like rubbish. So I hope that doesn't happen to him because he is a genuinely nice kid. He does seem like a nice kid. And like you say, yeah. all these people that, all these, you know, just pissed up people at the boxing that's go, oh, banter Dave Allen. Well, they're not there. They wasn't there with him in the, in the hospital afterwards when he was pretty no. much in a coma after Price, were they? No, they weren't, no, yeah, and it obviously shook him up that fight. You've got David Price there, old big truck, throwing them... And big, he can punch, uh, can't he? Yeah, he can punch like a mule. He, he's getting punched. What, what did they get punched over 300 times in his head? That fight was shocking. I, I remember watching that, and um, it was Barker, wasn't it, that was training him? But he should have been pulled out after five or six rounds. He took an absolute pound in Yeah, but what, what upsets me about that fight is, right, they were going to fight Daniel Dubois, weren't they, after... He turned that down, didn't he? Because the money. Yeah, they are, no, they were offered. He were offered a lot of money, and they asked yeah. for an extra extra load of money. And Frank Warren went no, and then Darren Barker said, "Oh, you should retire anyway now." And he came back and fought Dorian Darts, and Darren Barker didn't want to train him for that because he were giving chicken feed. But Barker were willing to train him for the Daniel Debar fight. Now that for me shows you what he is, Darren Barker. You are a shit. House, that's what you are. Shit house, come see me if you've got a problem. Shit house, that is yeah, that is disgusting. What happened? And everybody in the boxing fraternity, people who I've known around here and other areas of the country, I'm not going to say who, but they were like, What a shit house, typical Essex lot. They were going to let they Dave were... Allen get served up against the bar, smashed to bits, but he was going to get his cut, one out of a big lump of money. Yeah, ask him for an extra, whatever. Another third on top of what they've offered you. And he didn't get it. Frank Warren stood firm and so he should have done. And David, in my opinion, would have gone home after that and thought, oh, dropped a right clanger there. Dropped a clanger. But it's too late once the boat sailed. Too late. That's my opinion. So I know him. He would have been gutted about that. But 
But like yeah. I said, Darren Barker, well, you should retire. Oh, why? Why don't you train me for Dorian Darts? <laughs> but I'll train you for the bar. You see where I'm coming from? Was that from? his last fight, Darch? Darch for his last fight, and I've been told it, it's under invest- it's, it were under investigation, wasn't it? For oh, yeah. Camp. Yeah, I heard I don't know what's that, happening yeah. with that? Because it's is it on all the summit because of the pandemic? I don't know, but I wouldn't have said he'd <laughs> have anything, anything dodgy to do with it like that, Dave. I don't know, but... 27 year old retiring, and 28 is his 29 in March. But his last fight, he was 27 one in month before he was 28. So let's say he's retired 28. Why would you retire 28 when you're on Sky? I'm not having it. He'll be back. He'll be back once he that boredom sets in, and, and, and he's done enough eating lion bars and playing at me, playing at being Mr. Manager. Because uh, being a boxing manager is not like being a manager on on FIFA, is it? On internet, no. you know, when you're on place. Well, the thing is, if he comes back, he should get no sympathy if he ends up in a bad way. No, oh, what they'll do, they'll have to write. If he comes back, I mean, what story <laughs> haven't we had now? We've had every story possible, haven't we, around him? He's got to come back, clean shaven, suit on, got to come back with a reputable trainer and got to be putting the time in for him to be took seriously. Now, if you mm. went and trained with somebody in Sheffield, I'm not bothered, I'm not going to mention any names. He went and trained with a trainer, took it serious, got rid of all Klingons and hangers on, because they'll be long gone when he's long gone. Well, trust me. You know, when you're 15 minutes up, all the friends yeah. go. So get with a proper trainer and push it for the last four years of your career. Have a good four year, have 10 fights, get 10 paydays and get out. All he has to do is set a goal. Carl Froch and George Groves. They set goals to push themselves, and then they got out in the multi-millionaires. Why can't David do that? Why do why do you have to play yeah. too proud? They were super talented and took it very seriously, though, didn't they? Yeah, well, Dave's got Dave had a bit of talent. It just he it, it just couldn't tap into it because uh, his fitness. You know, when you can't throw a punch in round eight because you're shattered, you can't mm. use you. You know, it's like having a racing car in it with six gears, and you get to round eight and you can't go by third gear. You know that kind of thing. It, or, yeah. or you're running out of petrol. You're not going to win race, are you? The others, yeah. they stuck at it, didn't they? They weren't acting goat on social media, were they? And doing interview after interview after interview and tiring your mind out. When Carl Froch finished training, he's asleep at 9.30 up at Ellaby Hall. Go straight yeah. from Sheffield, go there. Have his evening league, evening, evening league, evening meal, uh, sea bass, asparagus, water. And then he goes to sleep, Carl, and that's it. And then he'll be up at six o'clock. Now, what's wrong with that? That's a good life, that, isn't it? Getting paid to yeah. train? Come on. Yeah. But you're not up on Twitter all night, is he, like David? So you've got two careers that have gone on different paths. One's won everything. One hasn't won anything. Well, he's all right, though. He's won at lads. Yeah, but not achieved, has he? He's missed, he's missed it, hasn't he? And that's frustrating, I think. There's nothing in, more in life more frustrating than a waste of talent, I don't think. Well, you know, obviously, you know him. Personally, don't you? I suppose I didn't ever really think he was that talented, but then I suppose if you see well, it, Dennis always absolutely. used to go on about it. So he had talent in Dave Allen, and we just, he just couldn't tap into it. I mean, look at how many trainers he's had. He's had, he's had, he's had 10, 11 trainers or something. Do you know, but what he's mean? had issues as well. He goes on about his mental health, doesn't he? So he's obviously, I don't got want to hear anything about that mental well. health because everybody in boxing's got mental health when it's yeah. so, when they're winning, they haven't got mental health when no it's going right, it's mental health. Shannon Courtney's got mental health, hasn't she? Nobody said a dicky bit about it until she got beat. Uh, I know, I've, I've taken the piss. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Everybody's got mental I must have mental health. We, 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 we all porridge I've done it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, listen, yeah. that mental health thing, it's it's a bit too convenient for my liking for people. Oh, know. it's the easy card to play, isn't it? Yeah. How do they think people went on in World War Two? Oh, yeah, exactly. You've got to have a stick. Stiff upper lip. Yeah. So moving on then. Yeah, moving on. Uh, so I'm done with my little rant on white, really. I guess I'll finish it by saying um, Joyce would batter him, and I'd like to see that fight. Why doesn't but... Dylan White call out Joe Joyce? He calls out when... Wilder. Do you right. know what? There's only there's only one person, in my opinion, in the heavyweight division that I would put solid money on beating Joyce, and that would be Fury. Purely because of movement and size. Yeah, I honestly think Joyce could beat the others or would stand a very good chance. I think put him in with Joshua. That's a hell of a fight. I, I think, think Joshua loses against Joe Joyce. Me at this moment would, in time. If he doesn't, if he doesn't get rid of him quick, he'll yeah. he'll 
it will wear him down, won't it? I don't see Joe Joyce ever hitting deck. He's that big. If he could take full blasters off the bar, who's going to budge him now? Yeah, true. Do you know what? I know uh, people have got mixed opinions on Sam Jones, but well, I don't know if you could really give Sam Jones much credit. I suppose you've got to give him some credit, and it goes along with Joyce's age as what, well. What, for putting but... his tongue up Eddie Earns rim? Well, for his, for that, yeah. But um, yeah, he has just put him straight in the fight, hasn't he? Sam I Jones guess he didn't have a choice because of his age, but... What's that? I said, Sam Jones, come see me. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, go on, sorry. Um, I know he didn't have much choice because of Joyce's age, but he doesn't care about putting him in with whoever, does he? No, no, he doesn't. You've got to credit that. Yeah. I, I think that uh, Sam Jones matched him correctly, even though I don't know him. I'm only going on some interviews, I see it. Some of his interviews, I think, are a bit, God, pull your tongue out of people's rings. But there's a lot of that goes on in boxing, and I don't like to see it. Joe Joyce is good enough to get fights. They don't need people rimming people on his behalf. Well, can't he talk or something for himself, Joe Joyce? Is he a big dummy or something? I don't know. Why does he need something like that around him? He's not even a board-registered license holder. So I, yeah. I don't get that. All these advisors mm. coming into boxing, I think it's wrong. I think it should be left to a trainer to train and manage them and, and advise the fighters and move forward like that. Because they're the closest person to the fighter. They know the fighter better than everybody, trainer. And they're always mm. there in the trainer's life from getting up to going to bed. If there's a problem, the trainer gets to hear about it. Whether it's the manager or not, I don't know. But all trainers should be managers of the fighters. That's my opinion anyway. I think there's too many ponsors in boxing, poncing money off boxers. And all these managers, all you managers who are taking money off kids who were who were earning less than five grand, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Ashamed of yourself. Taking your cuts off people earning under five thousand pounds. It's disgusting. It really bothers me. Right, here's a question for you then, Porky. Go on. Who is gonna take over the mantle after Fury? Out the next crop, so you can see. Well, you would have said Dubois, wouldn't you, before Joyce fight? But now you'd have to probably say maybe Yoga, so got, maybe Hergovic. I was going to say Hergovic. I like the look of him. Um, how old's Hunter? He's still youngish, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's not big enough, though, is he? He's a cruiser, isn't he? He's a blown-up cruiser, isn't he? He'd get flattened against any of them big big lads. I don't know. Joe he's Parker's still... still young. Yui Fury, he's only 26. He, yeah. He's going to be mixing a couple of years. Yeah, I can see Huey picking up a title. I know people can say, Porky, Huey don't throw his right on this shit. Look, I know Huey and I've seen him spar and I've seen him take big shots and I've seen him give big shots out. If Peter can get the mindset into the fight, because he's, he's mastered everything else, defence and movement and that, it's just his offence now, I think we'll have a complete fighter. And 26 year old now, people are talking about Chisora for pay-per-views and all that. He's 36. So yeah. he's got plenty of time to develop a personality and to develop his style and people should stop sticking it to him. Yeah, it's not his fault. He had a blood condition and he's got a few spots on him or a lot of spots, but they'll go. And, and his offence will work. And he's a nice kid, you if you get to know him. He's very quiet. Hmm. So I, I just think that he'll come good. And I'd, I'd say Tyson won belt when he was 27, didn't he? 27 and three months. Yui yeah. is... 26 and October, November, December, and 26 and four months. So let's judge Huey in another year where he is at the side of Tyson, right? Let's he won't have a title then, though, would he? He what? He won't have a title shot. Well, no, that. but let's judge him in two years when he's a year past what Tyson <laughs> did. But then Tyson yeah. went missing for a few years, didn't he? So let's judge Huey when he's like 29, and then we can yeah. say, do you know what? You is a British champion and a Euro level guy, European level guy. He just didn't quite make it. All we can say, told you, you if you will win a world title. Well, I'm telling you now, he'll win a world title before he retires, a version of world title. That's what I think. I, f I agree with you. I, f I think he will as well. Um, the best thing in you, he's got a, there's a big, like an aeroplane hangar thing on his land where his house is. And it's all I take the gym in there. It's fantastic facilities and everything, and you can sleep there and all sorts. 
So the investments there is 26. So his next 10 years mapped out. So people get behind Huey. He's coming for them belts and, and, and people need to stop giving him a hard time because he can fight. He can really fight. And like I said, he's got all skills. He's got skills to burn, honestly, mate. You know what? With these um these new ones that are coming through that we just mentioned, if um Chisora wants to stay in boxing, it'd be a perfect job for him, wouldn't it? For gatekeeper for all of them. Yeah, Chisora ain't gonna call you okay. out, is he? Because his style's horrible for Chisora, you is. Yeah, yeah, he won't Dylan call you out. Call him out, does he? You what? Dylan White called you a crackhead eighteen months ago. No, just before I went camp with you, just before we went to Bulgaria to fight Pula. Dillian White said on Twitter or something, you is a crackhead or on IFL or something. Let me tell you this. Dillian White, shut your mouth. If Dillian, if you is a crackhead, why don't you ring up the phone and say, you is a crackhead, I want to fill him in. Because Peter Fury will take that fight with you, Dillian White, in a heartbeat. Dillian White, a.k.a. the can't man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. This is one of the reasons why I dislike White. I saw an article the other day I think it was on Box and Scene. I couldn't be asked to read it, just saw the title. And it's, it was like Dillian White, and it said, I'm going to um, smash Povetkin up for all the shit he's been talking. For all the but shit he hasn't said a word. Povetkin doesn't say a fucking word. He's not said a dicky bird. <laughs> for all the I know. Shit. Is that all bad? Well, why don't you have a roll around on the floor with him, Dillian? Do something like that. Why don't you go fight him in Russia? Instead of one in just... Ed, Ed, Eddie's back garden. He just talks absolute shit. Garbage he? talks garbage, mate. That's his name, yeah. isn't it? Dillian the garbage collector, White. Yeah, it's what I just can't get behind him. I, I mean, purely because I don't think he's that good anyway. But his personality, he's just he's like he was like la- I remember um, he got pissed off when the people laughing that he got knocked out by Povetkin. I remember clear as day the video of him laughing his tits off when um, Fury beat Wilder, and it's just. Yeah. Double standards, isn't it? Yeah, let me just give a shout out to somebody who I forgot. Lily yeah. in Maltby. I know you're watching. I hope you like your porky teddy. All right, just a big shout out to Lily in Maltby, Rotherham. Go on, Lil. Big Lil. Get you on them pads, Lil. Get you on them pads. So, yeah, go on, uh, Rob, you were saying. Uh, well, I don't know. I think that's pretty much done on the heavyweights. Um, here's one that uh, you've obviously talked about a lot of the Gallagher stable not getting out a lot. Yeah, what yeah, I'm... I have actually. I'm quite vocal on that, actually. I just like to see fair play, that's all. And obviously, I, I don't think that, that it, it's all being treated well. I'm not saying they haven't had fights with Matchroom a lot because they've had a good run with Matchroom, haven't they, Joe Stable? But it's, it's seen, since, I can explain it. In the last 12 months, they've had a bit of a rough ride with slots, haven't they, from Sky, I think. You know, Callum Johnson, Beefy, Natasha Jonas, they said they were going to give it rematch. They had Marcus Morrison went out to Italy as B-side, beat Eddie's guy in Italy, didn't have a match room show, that blunder armour, and they've never mm. they've never got back to him with a fight since. So, how I look at it is, I think it's shocking, but I think it's very clicky in it at the moment. If you're in, if you've got, you've got to be an arse licker, right? What it is, right? If you arse lick Eddie Earn, you will get slots. If Eddie rings you up and says, got a slot for you, but the money's not too clever, what do you want to do? Yes, Eddie. Yes, Eddie. Yes, please, Eddie. It's like blockbusters. What, a, a tea? Yes, please, Bob. <laughs> well, yes, please, Eddie. Have you ever seen blockbusters where they go, yeah, yeah? Well, it's like that, isn't it? Eddie wants people like Coldwell and Steffi Bull. So when he rings, they go, yes, please. And that's yeah. it. Now, when he rings Joe Gallagher, Joe goes, oh, I don't like... Well, I get the impression that Joe goes, oh, God, Eddie, you're going to have to put a bit more money on the table than that. Footballers are not taking pay cuts, so why are boxers? You know, that kind of thing. And you yeah. can see Joe Gallagher going out to bat for his fighters, but other people, they're that fixated with rimming that with rimming Eddie Earn and being out there in public, they're that fixated with rimming, but they just say, yes, please, Ed. It's like Eddie Earn told Dave Allen, eh, that's Frank Warren for an extra third, what he's offered you. Yes, please. Oh, yes, okay, Eddie. So he goes and does that instead of saying, I mean, when Dave Allen, I don't want to go off track here, I'm just mentioning this because not many people know this. When Dave Allen was offered the biggest purse of his career to fight Daniel Dubois, 
The first thing he did was ring Eddie Hearn. But Dave Allen is not a matchroom contractor fighter. Fight, he manages fight, himself fight. or he had somebody else managing him and he was more or less in control of his own destiny. So why did Dave Allen take it upon himself to go, oh, Eddie, you'll never guess what? Queensby have rung and they've offered me this. What should I do? Ah, oh, tell him you want another third. Why didn't he just... Well, really, Dave Allen wanted to take it, but... He was coming out with, well, I want to show loyalty to Matchroom and all that. What fucking loyalty have Matchroom ever shown to Dave Allen besides <laughs> getting his head busted upside down? If he wanted to get out boxing after that prize fight, and let me tell you, he did, but he still had his license. He should have gone and took that fight for what they offered and said, fuck you, Eddie Earn. That's yeah. all he had to do, but he didn't. He went running to them, and Eddie's not going to do Frank a favour, so... They priced it out of him, but Eddie will look at it like, yeah, we'll get you this money. But when he didn't, he said, I'll make it up to you. But it was too late then. His head were all scrambled. David had gone into that fight with the bar and lasted two or three rounds, if that. But he'd have got yeah. paid and been set up for life. Now, what's he thinking now? He's missed the boat on that, hasn't he? So he's always going to have that on his mind because I know how, he's, how it works. But you wouldn't do that, would you, if you've not got a contract? Look, if you're, if you're working with somebody, right, you're self-employed, Say you're an electrician. You haven't got a contract with an electrician company. Somebody rings you up and offers you two grand a week, but you're getting 500 a week at this other company. You know, And these, this company with 500 quid, they're flogging you 16-hour shifts. But you can go somewhere else for four times as much money and you, don't, and you only have to do a quarter at work. You don't owe yeah. them no fucking loyalty, do you? So, uh, yeah, Eddie, I just want to show loyalty. Frank's offered me this. <laughs> Stupid stupidity stupidity because at the end of the day if you end up with no or whatever Eddie Yearn ain't going to pay your bills you're not going to be able to ring Eddie and say Eddie just put me a grand in my bank and to tide me over because I know people that have asked him you're not going to get it it don't work like that so by trying to be an arse licker it backfired on him didn't it by trying to be team match room he didn't even have a contract why would yeah. you do that Frank Warren offers you X amount of money, mega money, you go, yes, please, Frank, I've not got a, a contract at match room. But he didn't, did he? Missed, it's like that guy, in it, running for ferry and it sets off. He missed the boat. Well, there's a... The other thing I was going to say, another match room guy that hasn't been out in a while, Joe Cordina. Where's he been? I don't know, but I don't rate him anyway. Do you not? I quite, I I quite rate him. Cordina. They offered Joe Cordina. Sorry, they offered Josh Whale the fight against Joe Cordina on match mm. room. Or was it Jordan Gill? I think it might have been Jordan Gill. Yeah, they offered him. Sorry, Joe Jordan Gill. Sorry, no, I got that wrong. They offered Josh Whale Jordan Gill. Not, I don't know. I don't rate Jordan Joe Cordina. I don't rate him. He's not my cup of tea. Mm. No, Joe Cordina right. could sign on double. So. All right. Um, uh, only I've only got a couple more things to say. Really, Porky, I won't keep you that long. Yeah, go on, um, you're all right, you're all right. Uh, if we did ever manage to get a uh, round robin of the lighter heavyweights, so say Yard, Arthur, Buatzi, Johnson, Smith, who comes out on top in your opinion? Yard, Arthur, Johnson, and Smith. Which Smith? Callum Smith and Buatzi. Yeah, Callum and Smith. Buatzi, yeah. those five. Well, Callum Smith's not fought a light heavyweight yet, so we can't really put him in that mix, can we? No. He's a super middle at, at the moment, but if he moves up, you could. But I'd rather go with the other four. Callum Johnson and Boatsy. Who did you say the other one? Well, Lyndon Arthur and Anthony Yard. Yeah. I'd he say Callum Johnson's top. probably top dog out of all them on experience and what he's achieved because he dropped beat of beef, didn't he? And nearly, nearly scored a Ring Magazine upset of the year. Am I correct? Yeah. Well, I watched the fight. I agree. He did a good job, but he, he wasn't close to stopping him, was he? He put him he down. Dropped him, didn't he? he dropped the biggest puncher in world boxing. Yeah, he, he dropped him, but it wasn't like he got up on unsteady legs, did he? But I, I, I like Johnson, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't, I wouldn't... He... Okay, then, does Johnson beat Boatsy? I think so, yeah. Yeah, does he beat Lyndon Arthur? I don't know. That would be a good does fight. beat Yard? I don't know. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, I'd say... I'd yeah, yeah, I think Yard yeah, hasn't got enough in his locker. It's like walking around with big muscles and that. I know bodybuilders that get punched on the chin and they get Do you know what? Arthur, Arthur Johnson, both Manchester, aren't they? That would be a good fight, that would. Yeah, 
Uh, no, uh, Arthur Johnson. No, John, uh, Callum Johnson's from Lincoln, Lincolnshire. Boston. Is he? I thought yeah, he's Boston. I thought he's Manchester. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, Lyndon Arthur's a Manchester lad. Yeah. But yeah. I, so we're more or less saying then that Lyndon Arthur and Callum Johnson are top dogs in the UK at light heavyweight. Do you think that? I think Boatsy has to do more. Yeah. To jury's to out on Boatsy, isn't it? I think he could be very good. I mean, that Kalich fight. He came through it, is the best thing you could say, isn't it? His eye was a mess, so fair play to him for sticking at it. But Yeah. Well, I look at it like this, right? I'd say Callum Johnson maybe shades it on experience against Lyndon Arthur, even though, he had, even though he's not had that many fights, Callum. He's still got mm. experience, and he's 35 years old. He's won gold medals in amateurs and stuff like that, so in Commonwealth Games. So I'd say Callum Johnson's a better all-round fighter than Lyndon Arthur, because Lyndon Arthur's got time on his side, hasn't he? Yeah, how old is Arthur? 25, 26, something? Yeah, he's only young, isn't he? So yeah. he's got plenty of time on... on, on uh, seems, like a, uh, seems like a nice chap as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he Lyndon comes across Arthur. all right, Lyndon Arthur, and, and he's trained yeah. by my tip for trainer at year, Pat Barrett. Whether he gets it or not, I don't know, because uh, it's a bit political, that, isn't it? But I'd like to see him get some recognition for what he's done with Zelfa and Lyndon in the last uh, wow. 18 months. Which trainer's done more on him? Yard was a big win, wasn't it? Spellman was a good win. Uh, yeah. Barrett, who he fought the uh, that Irish kid, didn't he? Uh, in um, the garden, he was a good fighter. That Donovan, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, we're losing that fight. Zelf and he pulled it out of the bag, didn't he? Yeah. So that's, that's like... right. that was my favourite fight of that whole fight camp. Actually, that was that was a good one. That was. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that Pat Barrett's the best trainer in the country, but over the last 12 months, he's got the most impressive CV, hasn't he? So he, and, yeah. and I'd like to see him build on that because he gets a bit of a raw deal because he's you know he's done a bit of porridge and that and but I'd like to see him uh, do well. I always cheer for people who've who've been in jail. I don't know why I cheer for Peter Fury. I cheer for Pat Barrett. I don't know why there's something about Pete. I cheer for Neil Fano, who's just split up with Ritz in it last last meet uh, recently and it's just come out and it. So I'd always cheer for underdog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But well, then again, when I'm watching a gangster movie, I always cheer for gangster. I always bad. cheer for bad guys. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. Um, I'll just throw a few fights at you. Just pick a winner. Yeah. What, 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 you want me to say who's going to win it? Yeah. Um, Baturbia Bivol. Baturbia Bivol. Uh... Well, Baturbia's knocking on a bit now, isn't he? But he's a bigger puncher than Bivol. And Bivol, I he's think... He's a bigger man, isn't he? Yeah, I think the jury's still out on him as being elite, but I think he's a good world level fighter. But I think but beat a beef. Uh, I know that I know that I know that he, he beats him for a simple reason. I know stories that Bob Achisafe has said about when he was being hit by twenty ounce gloves in sparring him, and he, he'd never been hit by that by heavyweight. So I know that beat a beef is he is the original Ice Man. If Wilder was the Ice Man, he isn't no more. There's only one Ice Man in world boxing. Well, there's two Ice Men actually. There's Beta Beef and there's Eddie Hills, four and oh super yeah. amateur star, free by Eddie way Hills, yeah. of isn't that right, Eddie? Evening Eddie. So, but no, yeah. Beta Beef's the Ice Man in World Boxing. Every fight he's had, he's knocked them all out. So he's he's unbeatable and as regards that. Wilders uh, had a couple of fights where he hadn't knocked him out, and he's so Beta Beef beats Bivol for me. Yeah. Just on B to B, if I remember, um, saw an interview of Usyk. Someone asked him who is the best opponent he's fought, pro and amateur, and he said Baturbia. Yeah, Usyk had two fights with him, didn't he? As yeah, amateur, he he and, and he one. just shaded both of them, didn't he? In amateurs, yeah. and I, were one of them at Olympics? Uh, I think one of them was. Yeah, one think of them so. some other championships. And it was Usyk, at London, wasn't it? I think. Eight, yeah, Usyk's London, skills. Yeah. Just paid the bills on the day, but uh, as regards raw power, mm. well, I mean, Usyk moved up to cruiser, and then he went back down to light heavyweight, didn't he? Beat a beef, but yeah, I I think the beat a beef beats Bill. I do, yeah, yeah. All right, um, Crawford Spence. Crawford Spence. I do, think... do a pre, do a do a pre and post car crash if it's any different. Uh, I don't think that car crash makes any difference to his career. He got out of it pretty unscathed, didn't he? And he did a 13-week camp before he's just fought. So if you can get through a 13-week camp, you've pretty much shock off an accident that happened a year previous, aren't you? So I don't yeah. want to hear anything about car crashes and all that. 
it's a good fight. It's a pick and fight, but I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Errol Spence on points against... That's Rose. who I'd go as well. Might even just drop bit, him on the way. Bit bigger, any. Well, he's a big, big one, four seven, any I'm Spence. I'm going to go with Errol Spence because I really rate him. Anybody that can do that to Kel Brook at that stage of Kel's career is a fantastic fight because I rated Kel Brook very highly. Yeah. Uh, two more. Um, Tank Lopez. I'm going to go for Lopez because Tank doesn't live the life and I think it'll catch up with him sooner or later. Although he is explosive. He reminds yeah. me like a Mike Tyson. I think he's a car crash waiting to happen. Yeah. I think he's like a mini Adrian Broner, isn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. But he's Broner's on the comeback Broner. now, isn't he? Well, he's on Skid Row, isn't he, Broner? Yeah. All right, last one then. I'm not going to bother asking Fury Joshua because I'm sick of hearing about that. Fight. Fury, I'm um, points. Usyk Joshua. Usyk Joshua, Usyk on points. I'd go Usyk as well on that one, yeah. And I don't yeah. think they want that fight. I think they're doing Actually, it can to not fight him. One more then, one more. Usyk Joyce. Usyk Joyce. Usyk's already schooled Joyce in, in a tournament with no headgear. So I think he does yeah. him again. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do. Yeah, although I think it's a great. I rate Usyk. I think it's, I think it, it's between him and Josh. Uh, sorry, him and Tyson Fury for the best two heavyweights in world boxing. Yeah, I agree with that. I, like I said at the start, I think that. I think Usyk's the only one that could trouble him. A lot of people yeah. I know in boxing rate Usyk, but he doesn't seem to get the airtime to be rated because I think Eddie Earn is more or less signing him as a blocker on it to keep him away from Joshua. I mean, when has Eddie Earn, everybody Eddie Earn signs, the best thing since sliced, sliced bread. He signs Luis Ortiz as the number one WBA and he's the WBA interim champion and he doesn't say a word about him. He signs Usek, doesn't say a word about him. Luis Ortiz and Usek, Olympian southpaws. I mean, come on. They're like a rare breed. And Eddie bought no. them to, to, to protect Joshua, to keep them away from Joshua. Because if they'd have been with other promoters, other promoters would have been forcing them up rankings to call for their mandatories, wouldn't they? But now Usyk's sure. in a yeah. position for the mandatory, isn't he? Well, this is why, this is why I think uh, Fury Joshua fight happened this year. Because Hearn will be thinking if we lose to Fury, we're still getting paid shitloads. Yeah. If we don't fight Fury, we've got to fight Usyk, and there's a yeah, very real chance we lose. lose. Yeah. Then they've got to set a rematch up with Usyk and go for a, and then lose a 12, 12 months. So yeah. it could all stumble. This is why they probably push it for us. They're pushing for it. They probably could push for this fight and just have one belt on line, Ring Magazine. Yeah. Because I, I just thought uh, it won't happen. But thinking about it logically, it makes perfect sense why Eddie is actually pushing it that hard this time. Yeah. I think it will happen purely because of that. I do. I, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly on that with you, Rob. I do honestly. Yeah. I think that Usek's the real deal and I don't think Joshua wants it and I don't think Eddie Earn wants it. It's a risky fight. They don't mention Usek. They don't mention Yoka. Do you know what? I think Joshua probably would take it. I think it's more Hearn saying no. Yeah, they're thinking at money down the line, Eddie Hearn. That's what he's thinking about, mate. He's yeah. thinking at money. That's what yeah. they're thinking about, mate. That's what, listen, accountant by name, accountant by nature. We all know what happened, don't we, when, when Steve Collins beat Chris Eubank. They bailed out boxing, didn't they, Earns? Because they didn't have a big, yeah. didn't have a meal ticket. Why do they want to put money into boxing when they lost Eubank? When Joshua's gone, They'll say uh, risk reward will bail out, we'll bail back in when time's right. They will go. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Everybody else will be left to pick the pieces up. And good riddance. Well, he's got Canelo on a two fight deal now as well, Eddie. That to hedge his bets against Joshua Lewis. Yeah, they'll fall out, mate. They'll fall out. Yeah. yeah. They'll fall out. Well, he's got no excuse. He's got no excuse not to make Billy Joe Canelo now, has he? No, he hasn't. He's got Billy Joe. When when Canelo was just a him, They've got to wheel Billy Joe out. And if Billy Joe doesn't get wheeled out, then somebody's to blame. Whether it's Eddie Earn or whether it's Billy Joe, Saunders and Andlers, MTK, somebody's yeah. to blame. Or Billy yeah. Joe, I don't know. But Billy Joe's got to fight Canelo this year. If not, we can't invest any more time in him because we've been hearing this about this fight since 2015, haven't we? Since he won the yeah. world title. I don't, I, I don't want to hear anything about Billy Joe unless Canelo fights on from now on. So that's just my opinion. I think... 
I just don't want to hear anything about. I'm sick of hearing about Billy Joe Golovkin, Billy Joe Canelo, Billy Joe Callum Smith, and what we're getting you know, these, Billy, Billy Joe against Martin Murray. Come on, these weight divisions. This is what I was saying earlier about just not. I'm just not as bothered anymore. It's not like the days of even just going back five, six years. The Gale Groves, Froch. You know what I mean? It was interesting, and exciting, wasn't it? Whereas now you've got Saunders who barely ever fucking fights. Uh, Callum Smith, I mean, pff, I wouldn't be surprised if he retires. It's just a weird career. Callum Smith's not engaging with fans, but he's a quiet kid, but he can fight. Do you know what I mean? He's just yeah, he can quiet, fight. He? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's it, Porky, really. What about Lewis Ritson and Neil Fanel, my pal, splitting up? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't really know too much about it, mate. I honest. do. I spoke to him just now, and he just said that Ritson wants to be near her home. So he's home where, where was he based? Well, he was based in Hartlepool and running yeah. on sand dunes in the, up sand dunes in the morning with Savannah. She was training with him. And then he was training, going back to Fano's gym, which he's got on his on his land or holding in Hartlepool. We're training there. And I thought everything was all right. And he, he, after his last fight, obviously, he just said that he's homesick. So he's, he's well, apparently his dad's going to train him. Well, we'll see, won't we, down the line, if that's going to be the, uh, if that's going to happen. He's still lightweight. Yeah, but Hartlepool's not that far from Newcastle, is it? So I, I don't get all that homesick thing. Plus, he was stopping over in Hartlepool as well. Mm. So maybe, maybe stopping there Monday to Friday, he might miss his family. But he's a lovely kid, Lewis. A lovely kid. Mm. And I think it's a shame in that, and I think it's a shame for Jack and my pal because he's Fano's his best pal and Ritson's his fighter. So he's kind of like it middle, isn't he, Phil Jeffries? So I feel for yeah. him. But I wish Lewis Ritson all the best. And I wish Neil Fano all the best to a boxing good guys. And I just think it's a shame. But it's only one that's ever left Fano. And he didn't have Lewis from debut. So it probably wasn't as, a, it, it as much as if it were like Tommy Wardley. Because he had him since he was like, aye. So, but I, I wish Lewis all the best. Yeah. It's a shame. But if, if Lewis Ritson ends up, we any of the bean masons training him, I will be coming for you, Lewis Ritson. Come He'll be me. going to Caldwell, won't he? Well, oh God, my phone's ringing right now. He'll be going to Dave Caldwell. You see, He's this is t- where boxing is now. Kids t- know t- that if, if they're any good and they're not getting the chances, they've got to be with one of the TV trainers. They've got to be with an Instagram trainer like Dave Caldwell or... Go to Dave Caldwell or Adam Booth, Ben Davison, they're the best. Well, we're going to see, aren't we? But if he goes with Dave Caldwell, Lewis Ritson, off with your head. <laughs> he knows I'm only pulling his leg, don't you, Ritson? No, I'm not pulling your leg. It's your head I'll be pulling off. I'd be devastated if you went with Dave Caldwell because I'd feel like that it is a cult. You know, in, in fact, it ain't even a cult. It's a new world order. It's a new who's world Dave, order. Who's Dave Caldwell even got now, apart from Jordan Gill? Well, He's Dave Caldwell's not same... trained anybody from debut and done anything with anybody from debut. But we're, we're, the, the yeah. jury's out on him because he's got Opie Price and Jordan Gill, but Jordan Gill's already quit in the fight, and he said, well, cross him off. He had David Price, didn't he? Anthony Fowler, that didn't work out. Bell Yule got iced, didn't he? But the he, was but, the but he had them from being British champions, didn't he? Uh, David Price and, and Tony Bellew and P- Bellew had already been in a world title so or been in a couple of world titles so yeah. as regards Dave Caldwell doing anything with anybody from scratch no but he ex- he gets himself out there you have to give him credit and he, he puts himself in positions whether it's through arse licking or being a company man or doing interview after interview and throwing him senators You've got to give him credit and he's got a young family to feed and a gym to run, so he has to be given credit. But there's some things I know about him behind the scenes and that, and he's not my type of person. But as regards for this business, it suits him down to the ground, doesn't it? Probably wouldn't suit me down to the ground, this business, because I'm a bit like Fano and people like that and Peter Fury. I'm a bit no-nonsense kind of thing. I don't... Mick Whale, for example, Josh Whale's dad... I took a mate to a show and we were talking ringside and my mate who'd had a drink was chatting a load of shit in Mick Whale's ear. Mick Whale just said, listen, go over there, you're chatting shit. And I was like, God, if a big hole could have swallowed me up. What point I want to make is there's some people in boxing that are good guys and are stand up 
and and being in the game years, you know, you could smedlers, Mick Wales, and they've not made thousands and a lot of money out of the game, but they're, they're in it for the love of boxing. And then you get there's other people who are in it for a pound note. And I, I, I'm, I, I agree with Peter Fury on this. He once said to me, he said, you know what, Russ? I told you, eh? money will come if you're good enough. If you're not good enough, it won't come. And it's and that that is for all walks of life. If you're good at something, you'll get rewarded. But if you're trying to blag it, you'll get found out. Mm. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are trying to blag it in boxing, but they've got Eddie Earn zero, like Dave Caldwell. You might not like me talking about him like this, but he's 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 in Eddie Earns here, isn't he? And other people are trying to get in Eddie Earns here because they know if they make a friend of Eddie to get slots, that's what happens. Yeah, exactly. So then fighters come to you, and that's how the business works. Well, Caldwell was in the bloody Caldwell was there every week of fight camp, weren't he? I think. It, it, in fact, they named the bubble after him, the Dave Caldwell bubble. Yeah. I mean, you've got Dave Allen on IFL yesterday going on about twenty-five to thirty fighters want him to manage them so he's putting himself out there as this manager because he yeah. knows if he gets loads of fighters he can just if you get 30 fighters you're going to get three champions out of them surely he could just put on eddie can and just yeah. whatever that's the name of the game so you've got to befriend it all roads lead to eddie earns our soul well eddie earn hasn't got time for fighters has he? he's got to put on all the joshua's and dillian's these days hasn't he who's eddie earns Pay-per-view star after Joshua. If Joshua dropped dead tomorrow, if Joshua, right, smoked a spliff tomorrow and, and famous last words were, fuck me a boss, right? So Joshua's last words, fuck me a boss. Yeah. So he's got splattered by a boss. Touch wood, it don't happen. But if it hypothetically did, or he retired or whatever, who would be the next in line to be the face of matchroom boxing. You tell me three names now who you would, who you would see are the face of matchroom in the UK. Well, the people that I wouldn't agree with being big names, but it would be Connor Ben. Connor Ben, go on. Um, if that Josh Kelly can beat Avanessian, I guess he's probably the next one with, they'd say he's got the looks Josh and Kelly, the style. Josh Kelly, pay-per-view. God, David. No, no, I don't think... Well, no, I don't think any of them should be pay-per-view, but I'm saying... No, these who's, who's the next pay-per-view star coming through, then? After Joshua. Do you tell me who you think? Canelo? Well, yeah, already a given, isn't it? Oh, right, then, um, well, OK, then we'll take Canelo off, then. Could you imagine having to market Canelo in UK, bringing him over to the UK? Is that how bad it's got? We're bringing Mexican drug cheats over to the UK to front matchroom shows on pay-per-view. Well, they couldn't be scraping be barrel, wouldn't it? Not even they'd be able to um, manipulate the public into getting another pay per view star out of their stable, would they? There's no, there is no one, is there? Well, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm asking you, Robert, who's the next pay per view star after Anthony Joshua from match? Well, oh. at the moment, there's none. But if oh. Conor Ben keeps winning, it'll be him, I imagine. Yeah, but there ain't none at the moment, is there? No, there's none at all. No, no, no. And if it were Conor Ben in 12 months, they would have to roll the dice to work to who he's fought now, wouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's it. There's no one now, but Conor Ben will be the next one if he keeps winning. That's what right, I think. Well, if after Conor Ben, you're saying Josh Kelly, yeah? <laughs> I mean, we're scraping the barrel. What we? about Dylan you White? Have... He's already had five pay per views. Well, yeah, I just don't want to talk but about But that'll him. be scraping the barrel with Dylan White, won't it? Yeah. I mean, him up. What about Derek Chisora? Can they dig him up anymore? He's had 10 losses. The thing is, no matter how good Boazzi becomes, he hasn't got the personality, has he? No. Nice guy, by all accounts, seems like it. But he's when not they pay per view, he's not engaging enough. So where's this no, yeah. pay per view? Yeah. Why don't they try and do something with Callum Johnson? Try and put him in a in a, in a re, re, rematch with Beater Beave or in a big fight. Let him fight Boazzi, and whoever beats well, whoever wins that could be pay per view. Yeah. No, I agree. To yeah, Johnson, Joshua, yeah. Eddie Earns not at the races. That's why he's currently hanging out of the back of Ginger Nuts. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, I agree. Right then. I've enjoyed that, Rob. You've been an addition to the Porky Express train. Cheers, Porky. Appreciate it. All that, aboard, mate. all aboard. The Porky Express. Do, 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 do. 
So I've enjoyed that, mate. Uh, I'll have you on again. Uh, we'll get yeah, a couple same. of week break or something. I'm trying to fit them all in. I've got a eight list here. And anybody's welcome. It's porkycorner at mail.com. Don't hide behind your keyboards like Captain Kirk and Super Nuckler. Or Bacon. Not Bacon. What's he called? What's he called? Rupert Goebel, who keeps calling me a bacon. Rupert, never been a bacon in my life, but you're more than welcome to come on and debate with me and stop hiding behind your keyboard. This is Rupert. Porky bacon. <laughs> and I respect you for coming on. All them people that come on here, bump, bump, bump. I respect you. and Because it takes a lot to come on here because I am hard work, but I love the sport. But it takes a lot for to have to be to come on here and have it put out to four or five thousand people, doesn't it? You know what I mean? And everybody commenting on what you look like and what your house looks like and what you spoke about and everybody questioning it and this and that and blah blah. Oh, two seconds, we've got a pair of trainers to do. Think of a question, Rob. Is that me? Think of a question. Oh, here. here we are. Think of a mm. question. I'll get these train. We've got these trainers. Wait, it's, it's actually. Tomorrow, but I want to get it done today because I'm busy tomorrow. Right. Lacoste trainers, I forgot what mate they are. There we go. There you go. Brand new. I think this is fourth pair out of the ten, isn't it? Night man myself, but I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> uh the question is, well, I'll let you pick the question, Rob. Well, boxing related. Boxing related, yeah. Uh fuck it now. Um uh, bloody hell. I'm trying to think one that's not going to be that difficult. Uh, sorry, not going to be that easy. Uh, fucking hell, fucking hell, fucking hell. What round was McClellan, did the McClellan Ben fight? What round was it stopped in? Well, that's an easy one, that in it. Well, so you put me on the bloody spot. I'm trying to think oh, of one. Oh, can't you think of something a bit where they're going to have to do a bit of digging? <laughs> All right. Um, what about who was uh, think of a famous old school pound for pound fighter old school top at tree and who were, who were his first defeat against somebody like that and you pick the fighter who, who, who's the pound for pound guy and he lost and everybody was like wow he got beat who would you think who would you think Roberto Duran Roberto Duran who would you Roberto Duran's First loss or first world title loss? You want to go for his first ever loss, yeah? Yeah. Oh, was, okay, then. A question here from Rob uh, from Cheltenham, who's uh, joined the Porky Express train. Right. Who was Roberto Duran's first professional loss against? If you're quick, you need to get on your box wreck as quick as you can and email me, porkycorner at mail.com. Size 7 to 12. And I'll send them your second class, not first class, second, because it's only four quid. And you'll get them second class in the post for this weekend. You'll get them for Saturday. Nice trainers as well. Nice trainer, but not for me. All right. Is that it, Rob? You've done great. Yes, um, cheers, mate. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, hopefully, I'll be doing them in my office now, because from tomorrow, it's all my stuff's done. It's just a case of going there in the day, coming home, and then having to go back at night to do them. So... We're going to see. I might do odd ones up there at night. But, you know, when you come home, you just want to stay home, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Not be able to go back. Yeah. But, uh, all right. Thanks for coming on, Rob, and have a great evening. And all the best to you and your family for 2021. Cheers, mate. Take, Take it care, easy, Rob. buddy. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye. Well, that was Rob from uh, Cheltenham. Uh you know what I've been thinking? I've been thinking that maybe, maybe we should have on Mark Tibbs. Maybe we should have Mark Tibbs on. I'm not sure if he's gone away with Billy Joe. I'm not sure. Maybe we should have Mark Tibbs on again for a laugh. So I'm going to send him a text. Oh. I'll send him a text when I've got some battery power. <laughs> we'll have Mark. We'll, we'll spice it up a bit, but uh, it's all right. Hey, listen, at least Mark Tibbs and Peter Fury are not frightened to come on the channel, are they? See, this is what happened, you see. You know, you get people who are like, oh, I'd love to come on, but oh, Eddie might find out. <laughs> I don't know. 
Hey, that's a funny story, isn't it? I think I've told that before, I know. Me and Dave Allen and Dennis and Razor in Chippy in Attercliffe. I'm there with my shake. No, not a shake. Uh, an oasis. I've got a photo of this. Dave Allen's there fishing chips. Dennis taking a selfie. Dave's gone whoosh with plates. I've caught a plate and I tell you what, you've done that for you because I don't want Eddie Earn seeing that meeting eating fishing chips. How's about that for somebody who's switched on? Eh? Unbelievable. So that's what I want to say to you. Boxing is full of unpredictable characters, but there is always a method behind their madness. So be very careful, all right? Because people may appear daft, but they are very cunning. Peace out. <laughs>